they have something called foie gras and it's basically like the inside of a liver of a duck after it's been you know lots it's a it's a long process but they make it look like a little nice piece of like butter or cheese but it's totally not <laughs> and so I thought it was cheese at first and I was like this isn't that bad and then my companion leaned over and told me what it was and I was like no way that's so gross but it's okay it's okay it's not bad but I just think the idea just freaked me out <laughs> but it was good I didn't need it again but it was fine I just love anything sweet, so the pastries were were great. I think that showed by the end of my mission that I love the pastries, but they were so good, and the bread and the cheese, I mean, all of the things that you think of when you think France there, it's known for that for a reason, because it's really good. So I was serving in Versailles, and um, my companion and I weren't seeing a lot of success at the moment. And we we're like, okay, well, we know miracles can happen. So we just have to have our faith and we need to work. And we met this one lady and um, she's from the Philippines and her name is Gina. And she's just the sweetest woman in the world. And, um, but at first she, she gave us her number. And so we were super excited and we called her and we called her and she never responded. And so we got a call a few weeks later and the missionaries in Paris told us that they met her on the train and that she said that she had met us. And so, um, she lived in Versailles during the week and then she would go to Paris on the weekend. So she would go to church with them and we would teach her during the week and she got baptized three weeks later. And then I ended up finishing my mission in her ward. So it was really neat. She, she's the spiritual highlight of my mission. <laughs> I mean, I had some scary experiences, I guess, um, just with like the men, you know, sometimes. Um, they would, you know, touch our hair or they called me Barbie and just creepy things, but that's kind of it. <laughs> I think that when you go on a mission, you know, no matter where you go, you're out of your normal bubble and you're out of your, you know, normal lives and people around you. So I think that the best lesson learned, that's kind of hard to narrow it down, but um, one of the best lessons learned is just to not judge anybody because, um, I mean, we would go into the smallest one bedroom apartment where you open the door and it's just a bed and we'd have to sit on the bed to teach them or, you know, you'd meet people and at first you'd have these impressions You're like, well, I don't know if they'd ever get baptized, you know, but once you start to teach them, like you find the most beautiful people and, um, just the sweetest people. And I just think that, you know, going on a mission and serving, serving others and serving the Lord, you see the love that he has for other people. I learned the Metro system in Paris. And I remember getting there and someone showing it to me and I was like, that, that looks crazy. I'm never going to learn that. And then maybe I won't ever serve in Paris, but I got it down. So I got that. And <laughs> let's see what else, I guess just talking to people, just conversation, um, learning how to start conversation. I served in, in an area, in a region called Brittany. And, um, I was in a town called San Isaire. And it was right on the coast. And so it was either, I mean, we would wake up and it would be sunny and then we'd go outside and it would be raining. And then 20 minutes later it would be hailing and then, and then it'd be sunny again. And it was just the craziest weather all the time, changing all of the time, but it was fun. And we had some good experiences. Usually our hair was soaked by the end of the day, but it was fun. I just say bring tights if you're a sister missionary. Definitely bring tights. You will need them. Um, my mother sent me some fleece tights. They had fleece on the inside and I wore them all the time and they kept me warm. So, um, but no, not necessarily just good shoes and tights. Well, luckily I was blessed with really good companions and, um, I loved them a lot. I think one of the hardest, maybe one of the hardest times or hardest things were just, you know, teaching people who you thought were just so great and that, you know, we're going to go so far and then, you know, something happens or they're not interested anymore or you get so far and then they, they don't want to go any further. I think that's the hardest thing is just, you know, having so much hope for people that, you know, don't end up 
they don't end up accepting the gospel at that moment. So I'd say study chapter three and preach my gospel. <laughs> and then, I mean, just, just be excited because it's the best thing in the world. So at the end of my mission, I told myself, okay, I'm going to study for an hour every day, no matter what I do. And obviously, you know, that's a lot harder than it sounds. And, um, so I just say study, keep, keep a good routine with your scripture study because it's easy to slip up on that. Get home at time, get home at nine when you're supposed to. Um, and you know, always stay with your companion. That's a given, but just staying safe, just being aware of the area that you're in and what areas are more dangerous than others and um, for the most parts it's pretty safe. When I was preparing to go on my mission um, I was studying and praying and making sure it was the right thing to do and I read a scripture in DNC and it was in DNC 64 um, and it talked about laboring diligently and if you're prepared then you are called to serve today and um, I read that and obviously that was a pretty solid answer and so whenever I got on my mission um, we had a scripture of the year for the mission and I got to my mission in December and January they announced the scripture and it was the exact same scripture and I thought that was so neat because it wasn't just you know the scripture of the year but it was for that mission and so I just knew I was supposed to be in that mission at that time and it was really neat it was like a confirmation that came you know months after I had already chosen what to do <laughs> so it was good it was neat I had lots a lot of my companions um, were just great girls and they became some of my best friends but I really admired Sister Poznanski. She was the mission wife of my well, mission president's wife, my first mission president. Um, she's just the sweetest lady in the world and she just makes you feel like you know that she loves you and that she cares about you and she's such a classy lady so I loved her so much. <laughs>